All right. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. Go. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event where a webinar, a webcast, an online show, um, nobody can seem to agree on what the terminology is or what terminology they like. People have definite opinions on that. But whatever you want to call us, we are a show that we are here live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. If you're unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. Um, we do record our shows every week, and all of our recordings are available on our website. And I'll show you where that is at the end of today's show, where you can go to get the archives of our shows. We put up the um, recording into our YouTube account. Um, if there's any slides or presentations, they go into um, SlideShare or wherever someone may have their slides up there. If there are any websites mentioned during the show, we collect them in our Library Commission's Delicious account, and those are all bookmarked together in a group for you to have access to later. Uh, so that'll be available to you after the show. Um, both the show, um, the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share with any of your friends, neighbors, colleagues, family, anyone you think might be interested in any of our topics here. Um, they are welcome to watch our on our when this on, join us on Wednesdays or watch our recordings. Um, Yeah, I think that's it. I'm just trying to think of anything else that I was trying to say here. Um, so yeah, just send them over and we can um, you know, have them watch what we have on here. As I said, all of our recordings are there going back to the very beginning of the show too, which was in January 2009. So there's quite a lot out there in the archives. Um, interesting things, lots of stuff of course is, is probably outdated at this point, but you know, for historical purposes it's all there. Um, so we do have um, guest speakers that sometimes come in and talk on the show. Oh, we do a mixture of things here on the show, actually, and all sorts of different um, varying topics, uh, presentations, interviews, book reviews, mini training sessions. Um, basically, our only criteria is that it's library related somehow. Either it's something libraries are doing, um, a library sharing their experience in something, or some resource of some sort that a library could potentially use. Um, but we're very broad with that. So you'll sometimes see some says presentations that might not sound like they have anything to do with libraries, but if you, you know, you pay attention and see what we're talking about, you'll see where we connect it to them in some way. So everything is somehow library related. Um, we have guest speakers come in sometimes from outside the library commission, but we also have our own staff that do presentations regularly. And that's what we have this morning to my left here. Yeah is uh, Craig uh, Leftroff, who is our Technology Innovation Librarian here at the Nebraska Library Commission. And you did this session, when was it, earlier this year? Yes, yeah. a few months ago. A few months ago yeah. at one, during one of our, at one of our um, system meetings, mm -hmm. uh, events, system event. And we asked him on the show to do it here to share more broadly about how to use cloud services, cloud computing. It's a big... Um, I was going to say buzzword, but that makes it sound bad. But no, you, I agree with you. I was going to say buzzword okay. later. <laughs> it is, um, but it's very useful. And if you can figure out how to use it and what you can use it for you and in your library, um, you can probably you know, get a lot of use out of it and save some money on mm -hmm. some of what you've been doing. So Absolutely. I'm just going to uh, hand over to you, Craig, to take it away and tell okay. us all about how to cloud compute. Okay. Let me make sure I'm there. Yeah. Okay. So... Um, as we mentioned, cloud storage is kind of a buzzword. It's basically a new term for something that's been happening for quite a long time. Mm. At a basic level, cloud storage really means you're just saving your data or your files on someone else's machine. So it's not necessarily it's out in the cloud or it's something that hasn't been seen before. It's essentially instead of putting it on my laptop or my desktop in front of me, I'm putting it on machines that might be dispersed through a pretty wide geographical range. Mm -hmm. I think that's something that a lot of people don't even understand the definition. They think the cloud is somewhere, some <laughs> ephemeral thing out right. there, but it's no, it's just another computer. You've mm -hmm. got to have everything on a computer somewhere. It's just how you get to it, that it's not physically in front of you, mm -hmm. the, the, the equipment. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So basically, this is my pithy definition. It's replacing your hard drive with their hard drive, <laughs> and that's all there, that it really mm -hmm. entails. Um, as I said, it's basically not new. It's been going on for quite a while. And actually, in the early days of computing, computers were big, immense. They had their own rooms. Um, and the big computers did all the work. They would do all the heavy lifting and then push out the results to a bunch of dumb terminals. So you had computers that were basically just receptacles. Um, that's sort of similar to the structure of cloud computing today. You have these servers out there in you know whatever part of the world 
doing the heavy lifting and doing the processing, and then you sort of reap the benefits on your own local machine. Um, I think that they can be beneficial to libraries, but I think there are some considerations that we'll talk about. There are things mm -hmm. to keep in mind because libraries are a very specific kind of service. We have very um, specific values that sometimes don't mesh with corporations who run cloud services, so mm -hmm. we'll get into that a bit. Common in lots of areas of libraries. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> We're special, so you know, <laughs> we have to take special consideration. So let's start by talking about some of the advantages of cloud service, um, cloud computing. One big one is that hardware is not going to be as much of a consideration for you. If you have another computer out there in New York or India or wherever they happen to be doing all the storing and all the heavy lifting, you don't have to worry as much about memory or server machines at your local um, library or your location. So cloud uh, service can definitely save you a bit in terms of purchasing new hardware and worrying about maintaining your existing hardware. If you're paying for cloud service or even if you're getting the sort of free uh, limited cloud service that we'll talk about, you know that those machines are always going to be up to date. That's basically the company's focus, keeping those machines up to date, keeping them running. So um, that's definitely a benefit. Another plus would be that you can access your files from anywhere, um, with a caveat that anywhere includes devices that have an internet connection, uh, things that have a browser that can get out to the internet. So if you put your files up into the cloud, you can get to them from a desktop computer, a laptop, a phone, a, you know, an e-reader that has internet capability. You can get to the same files from multiple locations, and it's all the same. Um, content, you know, so you're seeing uniform uh, uniform files. Some devices are now totally cloud focused, um, or almost totally cloud focused. You guys have probably heard of Chromebooks. Those mm -hmm. are more or less designed to do a lot of their operations in the cloud. They don't do too much at the local level where your mm -hmm. physical machine is. Mm -hmm. um, and Google actually also has something called Chrome Bits, which is a USB stick. You basically can plug it into a display, like an old TV that has a USB port, that then turns the machine into kind of a Chromebook. Yeah. So same principle. Cool. Mm -hmm. Another advantage might be that um, many cloud providers offer automatic syncing. The way this works is you create a folder on your desktop um, basically a place where you want all of your backed up stuff to go. So anything you put into that folder, whether that be documents, images, PDFs, music files, video files, or whatever, is duplicated in your cloud storage. It's a one-to-one -one kind of mirrored relationship. It's not necessarily the same thing as doing a total backup of your machine. Uh, there are <laughs> services like Carbonite that provide that, mm -hmm. but this is more or less just providing mirroring for this one particular folder. So that can be very helpful. Drawbacks. Um, one big one is that you may not necessarily own your data completely. When you use a cloud service, you have to, in general, agree to a long list of legal terms. And that covers who um, controls the data and what they can do with it. You guys have probably seen a bit of this in some of the stories about Facebook and Instagram, um, some of the things that have come out that say when you add photos or videos to these services, you don't necessarily own them completely. Facebook and Instagram mm -hmm. can incorporate those into advertising. They can transfer usage rights and do all sorts of other things with them. Um, when you're thinking about this, as I mentioned, some companies don't share library values, so you might want to uh, also consider these companies in terms of how they interact with inquiries about you know, uh, usage and privacy. We would not hand over library records to an authority who came to the library, but if you're uploading stuff to the cloud that's library related, some of these companies might not share that same value mm -hmm. or that same reticence to um, hand over data. So that's something to consider as well. 
Another drawback is that your data may not uh, reside here in the U.S. If you're sending it out to a worldwide company, they essentially can put it in any location. Um, this varies depending on, in some cases, what you pay. Just to cite one example, Microsoft's OneDrive service, with their free cloud storage, they basically decide where they put your data. So if they want to put it in Eastern Europe, they will. If they want to put it in Australia, they will. Um, it's wherever it's most convenient for them to go. But if you pay for the premium OneDrive for business, you do have a bit more of a say in terms of where your data is housed. Mm -hmm. So that can also be important in terms of um, how your data is treated, not necessarily just in terms of how the company treats it, but also the laws of the, the That's country. That's what I was thinking, yeah. is, is where it's actually, whatever computer it's actually physically on, is that what rules what can or can't be done with it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So that's definitely something to consider, especially if you're uploading anything that might be considered sensitive or you know require a bit more privacy. And of course, if you're putting stuff out there, you are going to necessarily make yourself susceptible to potential hacks. Most cloud storage companies, at least the biggies, um, focus quite a bit on security and keeping things safe, but nothing is 100% guaranteed. You guys might remember uh, that Apple's iCloud service had a hack with celebrities who had photos that were mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. eventually distributed all throughout the Internet. So something like that can happen. Uh, it's something to consider when you're mulling over what to put onto your cloud service. One thing that might help you in terms of security is encryption. Um, encryption basically means that your data is encoded, so only people who are authorized or who have these same encryption tools can view it. There are lots of free resources that can help you out with encryption. One is Reset the Net, and they have a privacy pack that you can download that has all kinds of tools in it. There are also standalone tools like Voxcriptor and Vivo. Um, and I would say that the drawback is sort of parallel with the benefit for encryption because it does make mm -hmm. it more difficult for your data to be viewed by the bad people, but it also makes your data more difficult to be viewed by the good people. They have to have these same tools in order mm -hmm. to decrypt your files and actually use them. So um, it adds a bit more in terms of getting access. It adds a few more steps. One other piece of encryption that might be helpful to you is two-factor authentication. Excuse me. Um, so instead of just putting in a username and a password, you would also have to enter a passcode. You might have to answer a question like, what's your dog's name? Or what street did you live on as a child? Um, it just adds an extra layer of security to that interaction, makes your data a little, a little less susceptible to um, villains, I guess. <laughs> Um, one other drawback, especially as it relates to the free cloud storage, your storage space can be kind of revoked. They can walk things back when they um, feel like they've given you a bit too much. This is from OneDrive, not to pick on OneDrive. Mm -hmm. But about a month ago, they switched their amount of free storage space from 15 gigs to 5 gigs. So, yeah, kind of a, a big hit for people who might have been using that service. They ordinarily will give you excuse me, give you plenty of advanced warning, but it's still kind of a, a hassle, I think. If you've been using it, what's that been given to you? Yeah, what do you do with all your extra stuff now? Mm -hmm. If you've got that filled up. Yeah, absolutely. I assume, okay, that was the free, then the, the, what you could pay for more space right. is the idea, with, exactly. at least directly with them. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I haven't seen any instances of your, you know, pay premium services being changed. You mm -hmm. know, you get what you get whenever you enter into that contract, but the free stuff, they definitely are uh, mm. sometimes making those changes. Okay, so let's talk a bit about providers. Um, this is Google Drive, and I'll show you some of these services later on in the presentation. If you have a Google account, like a Gmail account, you will get up to 15 gigs free, and then they have premium uh, pricing above that. You can get 100 gigs for $2 per month, you can get a terabyte per month for $10, so it's not too expensive. It uses the Google Drive Office Suite, and those are pretty much comparable apps to your Microsoft Office stuff, mm -hmm. like Word and Excel and so on. You can actually um, upload 
Microsoft Office files into Google Drive and it converts it. I've done that. Yeah, yeah. I use it at, for personal stuff, and, I've, and you can if you've created something there, you can export it mm -hmm. and into being an Office type thing that you can then use. Yeah, I've had to do that. <laughs> yeah, um, you can attach stuff directly to Gmail from your drive, so that's helpful as well. It does include built-in OCR for PDF files, and that's not necessarily a big wow, because you can do that with Adobe Reader as well, but it is kind of helpful to have that built-in. So you can search for text in a big PDF document right in Google Drive. Um, up to 50 people can collaborate on the same file and see the changes in real time. So as we mentioned, uh, basic cloud service is basically just you're storing stuff on other machines, but these providers tack on additional features, and that collaboration is definitely something you'll see with the various providers. Uh, one other thing about Google that I didn't mention is that they do have add-ons available, so you can add on things to handle faxes or merging PDFs or uh, a blueprint program to sort of design a room, and I'll show you that a bit later on as well. So that's Google Drive. Uh, Microsoft OneDrive, free to use with a Microsoft account, up to 5 gigs. Uh, 50 gigs is $2 a month. It's pretty well integrated with Microsoft Office, as you'd expect from the same company. So your Word files, your Excel files, PowerPoint, and so on, those work very well with OneDrive. Um, as I mentioned last, well, last year they announced that they were going to downgrade their storage. I think they actually did that last month. It's built in natively to Windows 8 and Windows 10 operating systems. So if you have a newer machine, you probably have OneDrive as an app already. And um, in addition to the free storage you get with a Microsoft account, you can get more free storage by using Bing Rewards, which is their search service. So if you, instead of going to Google to find things, if you go to Bing and just search a bit, you'll accumulate those Bing Rewards, which you can then turn in for more free storage. Mm -hmm. Dropbox is kind of a big name. Um, the free version is two gigs. You can get 50, uh, one terabyte per month for 825 with their pro version. They do have apps available for pretty much every major platform. So if you have uh, Windows, but also Linux, Blackberry, Kindle Fire, Android, iOS, they have apps available for all of that. One thing that's notable about Dropbox is they are um, heavily focused on encryption, so they encrypt everything from end to end to add uh, a bit more security to what you're doing on there. And they do work with Microsoft Office Online, which is another cloud-based service. It's basically the same thing as opening up Word or Excel on your computer, except that it all functions on their website. Um, in my experience with using this feature of Dropbox, it's kind of been draggy at times, so mm -hmm. it's not... Uh, it's not entirely identical to the desktop experience when you're opening up Office and kind of moving around. It's a, a little slow at times, but it does work. Box is one that's basically not on a lot of people's radar. Um, I like Box a lot. The free version offers up to 10 gigs. That's their personal plan. The thing about Box is they are heavily focused on business users, so you kind of have to make um, changes when you go to their site. They assume by default you're a business seeking uh, cloud service from them, so you have to click around and change that to an individual or personal plan. Um, again, it's integrated with Microsoft Office 365. It's also um, integrated with Google's Drive features, so you get the best of both worlds from Box in some ways. They do encrypt all your content. Again, as I said, they're focused on business and IT users. And the web app um, has buttons to create new Google Docs right from Box's website. So that's pretty cool. This is not, that's one I've not heard of, yeah. Is it new or just I just it's, haven't known about it? <laughs> it's been around, and I think oh, okay. they shifted their focus to business and IT. That probably wouldn't be, yeah, I wouldn't have paid much attention to that, most likely, if that's where they're focusing their marketing and whatnot, yeah. Yeah, I think they kind of got um, surpassed by some of the bigger names in terms mm -hmm. of personal users, so they just changed their business strategy. Cool. Yeah. Um, there's also Amazon, Amazon Cloud Drive. For $12 a year, you get unlimited photo storage and 5 gigs of storage for files that aren't photos. If you are an Amazon Prime subscriber, you already have this feature, so if you pay their I think it's 99 per year to have Amazon mm -hmm. Prime or something. Yeah. That's one of the features you get. Mm -hmm. um, 
$60 per year, you get unlimited storage for all file types. There's no free option with Amazon. Um, it is what it is, but if you do have the Amazon Prime service, you already have some of the features that are available. So those are some of the big names. There are tons of different cloud providers right now. I would caution mm -hmm. you to do your research before you jump right in, um, mm -hmm. and this is why. There's one service called Mega, and it is affiliated with a guy named Kim.com who mm -hmm. ran Mega Upload. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mega Upload was a file sharing service that was shut down by the FBI. So <laughs> probably don't want to be involved in that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Necessarily. Yeah, and their servers are also um, overseas as well, so that adds mm -hmm. another wrinkle to the whole thing. But if there's a service you haven't heard of that's promising a lot of free storage or all these kind of whiz bang features, it's generally a good idea to search. Um, the name and see what other people are saying or what their history might be. Um, in terms of the free storage, which is what some people will opt to do rather than pay a subscription fee, there are ways to maximize your free storage. I mentioned with OneDrive, you can use your Bing rewards to kind of convert those into free storage space. You can do that with pretty much all of the major players. Um, this is from a blog called Lifehacker that mm -hmm. frequently uh, offers articles on increasing storage space, so it's a good place to go and get tricks and tips. Um, for Dropbox, you can do referrals. OneDrive has the Bing rewards, and there are all sorts of other little um, avenues you can take to increase your storage space for all of the services. So um, in terms of where this is going and whether this has a future, I think that looking at some of the products and some of the um, services that are popping up are kind of a good indicator of how viable this idea might be. This phone is a Nextbit Robin. It's a new cell phone. It comes with 100 gigs of storage. The only caveat is that the storage is entirely cloud-based. So mm -hmm. you're all of your photos, your video, and so on that you're taking with that phone goes out to someone else's server, and it's held there. Um, Amazon Web Services is distinct from the Amazon Cloud service. That's actually more business-focused. It's one of their most profitable sectors. They have um, 1 million users now and $10 billion in revenue. And other services actually run on Amazon's web service mm -hmm. platform. So Instagram runs on it, Pinterest runs on it, Netflix. And They're behind a lot of things you don't know. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, <laughs> You're not even aware of that's what's in there, yeah. Yeah. Um, Box actually runs on Amazon, so the huh. free cloud service runs on the paid web service. <laughs> it's it's uh, very odd. And the other uh, little slide that I have there is something about banking in the cloud. As it becomes more of a priority, um, you're seeing more and more thought put into security and uh, ensuring that data is kept safe. So I think you'll probably see more of that as time goes on. One thing that I just read before I came here is that Google purchased um, a platform to buy and sell cloud-based services called Orbitera for $100 million. So, oh, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah, Google obviously sees um, a lot of future in this sort of thing, so I think that's kind of a good indicator that it's going to be around for a while. Some considerations, especially for libraries. These are things that I would look for, uh, questions I would ask before signing up, uh, especially if you're going to pony up the money and purchase a subscription to any of these services. Take a look at their downtime history and their reliability because you are going out to um, you know, their server through these wires and this internet connection. You want to make sure that this stuff is available most of the time. Obviously, things can go down momentarily, but um, if they have a patchy history, that can kind of be a, a big red flag. Look at pricing and see if pricing has increased or if they made changes to their pricing structure. Um, that's kind of something you want to investigate as well. Take a look at extra features. As we said, all cloud storage is basically the same at some level, but beyond that, they might have things that you might need, like collaboration or like the ability to integrate Google Drive or Microsoft Office products in there. 
Um, have they had unpleasant interactions with the police? Stay away. <laughs> um, security and privacy are important for libraries. You want to uh, work with someone who's going to respect our culture and our reverence for privacy. Um, both in terms of what they do with your data <clears throat> and what they do with your data when you're leaving their service. Um, when it comes time for a um, final deletion of all this stuff, what happens to it? Do you actually, um, are you assured that it's going to be deleted from their servers or will they have copies hanging around? How deleted is it? <laughs> yeah, how deleted is it? Um, and also, can you migrate it elsewhere? So if you decide I can get a better deal with this competitor, mm -hmm. are you going to be able to take this stuff kind of in one fell swoop and put it somewhere else? And this is the other animation. It's clouds. Uh, um, if you guys have any questions at this point, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Also, at the very bottom there, the uh, goo.gl link will take you out to my Box account, so you can download this presentation and a few other things. And I will just wait a second for any questions to roll in, and then we'll take a look at the individual services themselves. And I'll add that link to our... Um Delicious links will be available to you afterwards if you are not able to get it. Uh, make sure I get the right one. Okay. That's it. There you go. Yep. Cool. All right. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, comments, or anything, use your questions section of your GoToWebinar interface. Type it in now. Um, Craig can answer anything you've thought of, um, but he's also going to live demo some of this stuff, so mm, you can still patch your questions in there. Um, we did have a comment about the Chrome bit. Okay. So it says, I think you, I, maybe you misspoke. It's actually HDMI is the connection that it needs uh, on the TV, yes. not USB. Yes, thank um, you. And it's also, this is interesting, because I thought, I was thinking of it as like a, um, like a flash drive or something, but it actually needs a power supply. It's, it actually needs, it's, it needs to be plugged in as mm -hmm. well. It's an extra device that you connect into your TV, like your cable box or DVR player or something like mm -hmm. that. Yeah, interesting. Um, okay, we do have a question, which... Um, I think you sort of kind of mentioned, but I guess we can elaborate on it. What assurances do users have about third parties accessing your data? Like, I guess if it's on one of these services and some, mm -hmm. I guess it could be there's somebody hacking or by accident some other of their, um, one of their clients, I don't know. Right, yeah. I think that would be covered by your terms of service, you know, to which you consent whenever you mm -hmm. initially use the, uh, the service itself. And again, you probably just want to, ask that question before you sign on. Uh, how is your security protected and what happens when there is something that goes awry? Mm -hmm. Especially it depends on what you're putting out there too, like you're talking about private information about our, our users or anything mm -hmm. like that. You'd want to make sure that we're, if you need to use cloud storage for that kind of information that you make sure that it's extra special, extra safe. Uh, depends on what you're using it for too, though. if you're just like using it to house, you know, your flyers and your mm -hmm. presentations that don't have anything, you know, secure, you know, that needs that, you maybe don't need to worry so quite so much. Yeah, and I think that would direct what you put out there as well. Mm -hmm. um, as you said, if it's just flyers or presentations, it's probably not a big deal if someone knows that you're having a, a knitting program at the <laughs> library. Um, yeah. Or if you wanted to use it to store some things that you don't use all year, like your summer library club stuff that right. you don't necessarily need in December. Um, mm -hmm. But you it's don't. like off-site storage of books, but exactly. off-site storage of your, yeah, mm -hmm. electronic stuff. Yeah, but you probably don't want to upload patron records with you know social security no. numbers and <laughs> definitely you don't want to keep that. Though. Right, yeah. close to the best. Yeah. All right. Um, another questions will come in just now. Okay. That's fine. Um, if you as as we're going through things, type in a question. And I can grab it when whenever it's appropriate and. Um, and we can get all the information you need. So go ahead and okay. Let head me just swap here. out here. Oh, okay. I had a browser open, but I'll open it again. Oh, oh did we close it down? <laughs> Sorry, it That's must okay. have gotten clicked. That's no problem. I think yeah. I might have done it, actually. <laughs> um, will they be able to see it from here? Um, yeah, yeah, it's okay. doing uh, screen sharing. Yep, so it's okay. showing everything you're doing. Okay, I'm going to show you Box first. Maybe. Okay, so this is my box account. It's pretty stripped down, just a list of folders and um, 
I can upload a new one here. So if I wanted to upload something, I could just go into here and click files or folders. If I click on new, I have the option to create a new Word document, PowerPoint, Excel, or go into the Google Drive stuff with doc and spreadsheet. Um, this is actually the folder that I included in my presentation as a shared link for you guys. So this is what you should be seeing if you go to this folder. Mm -hmm. We've got PDFs, PowerPoints, and so on. Um, and that's interesting because you saw you logged into your account to get to this, but you were you you've shared this particular part publicly, so mm -hmm. other people who want to go and look at this don't have to log in or have a box account. It's no. you, you're sharing it out there for them to use. Yeah. No, I can actually um, show you that if you'd like. If I can get cursor here. Mm -hmm. there it goes. Yeah. Okay, so this is the public side, mm -hmm. and it's very zoomed in. There we go. Um, basically the same thing. And you can pick and choose which stuff is public and which stuff you don't share. Yeah. Absolutely. When, yeah. you when you have an account, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that's nice about Box in terms of collaboration, they do have the option to add a Box note like this. So as I say here, if you had a Box mm -hmm. account, you could edit this text or add new text or media of your own. Um, this isn't as robust as some word processing programs. You basically just have your standard stuff like font mm -hmm. and you know some of the styling and so on. You can add photos or you can add a table, so that's nice in some ways. Mm -hmm. um, you can also add comments, and in the comments you can type the ad almost like you're on Twitter to notify someone that, hey, you need to work on this section of the document. Oh, cool. Yep, so that's that's pretty nice. Um, you do have the revision history as well, so you can revert back to previous things if someone messes up your document. Mm -hmm. And you have a share option. So if you want to give someone total access, you can do that. You can also limit uh, their participation in the document if there's someone that you want to, you know, you don't want them messing with certain aspects, you can definitely control that. You can create a share link for anything, so you can basically make it public. As long as anyone has that link or can type in the URL, they can get there and view it. You can invite collaborators. You can upload by email. So Box really has a lot. It's um, not the prettiest site ever, probably. It's very <laughs> Spartan, but uh, you can do quite a bit with it. If you guys have any questions about Box, feel free to ask away. Otherwise, we'll move on to Google Drive. Okay. I'll keep my eyes open. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay, so this is Drive, and some of you have probably seen this already. Um, you can create folders in Drive. You can upload files straight to Drive. It tells you at the bottom how much uh, space you're using. You can also upgrade your storage here. And you can see I'm not using you know, anything at all at this point. So out of my 15 gigs, I've got 0% you know, used practically. But if I did hit that limit, I do have the option to get these sort of premium services as well. With um, Google Drive, you can create these new documents in Drive that kind of parallel what you get in Microsoft Office. So Google Docs, Google Sheets, and so on. You can also connect apps to it. So if I go down here to more and say connect more apps, I get a whole slew of things mm -hmm. that I can add onto my Google Drive. Um, you can do <laughs> Pixlr, which is sort of like a, a very compact mm. uh, Photoshop or yeah, we've used program. That I've used Pixlr. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, this is pretty cool. Flat music scores and guitar tabs. Yeah. And s yeah. all sorts of things here. Um, you can add stuff to convert videos to assemble PDFs into one document. And floor planner, which is pretty neat. So let me load this up for you. And I've already been working on something here. This is essentially just a blueprint service. 
it lets you create a room and then put stuff in it. So you can see how the room cool. might look when you do it in real life. Uh -huh. Yeah, so once it loads up here, you can see I've got whatever this is <laughs> and a table here. I've also got an Ultimaker 3D printer on the table and I can bring in more. Um, so there are all sorts of things I can do. I want to put a kitchen section in here. Mm -hmm. I can do it. So if you're trying to design a new library space and figure out where to put things, this exactly. could be very useful for that. Huh? Mm -hmm. yep. um, and then once you're done, of course, you can save or print or share this. You get the option to create one room with a free account with Floor Planner. Of course, if you wanted to do more, there's always the premium mm -hmm. option available. Leave mm -hmm. that and go back. And let me find... We used, I just recently used one of the um, add-ons for this plugins um, to do labels, mailing labels. Oh, okay. Um, Avery, which is, you know, mm -hmm. you know, Avery, big name, and just the labels themselves, they have a plugin for Google that you can then use. Like, if you have a Google spreadsheet of addresses and things that you need to mail out, use the Avery plugin, can find which, which uh, model or whatever of slide or labels you have, and then it'll smoosh it together, I don't know what those technology technical term is, and then it'll, you know, be able to put it right out there for you. It's really slick. Fantastic. Um, basically, you guys can see that you can add pretty much any type of document. I've got spreadsheets, PDFs, standard mm -hmm. Word document files, and so on. So um, I wonder if we have any Microsoft documents on our computer here. No, there could be. You never know what's on there. Yeah, I don't want to upload anything lift. too <laughs> sensitive, but uh, there's something there. So brainstorming. Brainstorming of sustainability that might be. Okay, yeah, well, we'll just that's give it a shot. Thing. Yeah. So uh, this is a DocX Microsoft Office format, but it goes right into my Google Drive, and then I can view it, uh, which I won't do because I don't know what this is. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, that's Drive. Um, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask. In the meantime, I'll hop over to OneDrive, which is Microsoft's cloud service. Yeah, and if you see anything that he's showing and or that's coming up on the screen that he hasn't clicked on that you want him to show, you know, say Absolutely. something and we'll we'll do that, no problem. As you guys can tell, I basically have um, I use free service from all the providers, so I haven't paid for anything yet just because mm -hmm. I've got enough free storage space from the various uh, vendors that I don't have to. Best thing, too, if one, if you decide to go with one and they don't have enough room, you can have just an account on each one and mm -hmm. spread out. You just pay, you know, just remember which stuff is where yeah. <laughs> and use all that free space up until you, you, you totally run out and then decide if you need to do any more. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so OneDrive works essentially the same way. You can upload those files, and they do stay in that sort of Microsoft Office format, so DocX, PPTX. You can also create a new file um, using the Microsoft Office Online program, which is kind of a cloud-based version of Office. So if I wanted to create a new Word document, it will eventually load up here. And... Um, as I mentioned before, this isn't necessarily as robust as what you get in the desktop version, so there are mm -hmm. some things missing, but mm -hmm. most of what you need to do to do your work is here. Um, and it works the same way as the standard desktop Microsoft Office suite. You just type what you want. Mm -hmm. Jump over the lazy dog. Mm -hmm. um, you can move things. You can cut and paste. Unfortunately, some things don't work as well, so if I highlight and try to click and drag this, not so much. <laughs> But um, for the most part, it's, it's a good alternative, and it's a good feature to have in OneDrive. Well, these things, I think, are good for collaboration mm -hmm. with people who are not in the same location as you. Like if you're trying to work on something and you're at the library and some employee or some volunteer is at home and you can say, here, go, look at this, do this. You know, Let me know if you like what I did. Or here's the schedule for the week. Is it good for you? <laughs> that kind of thing. Absolutely. Yeah, collaboration is such a huge um, benefit to these sort of uh, offerings, I think, especially when you have something like Google Drive that can accommodate 50 people at one time. That's yeah, that's extremely helpful. All 
okay, as you can see, um, I've got five gigs of space with one drive, and I'm not using, you know, not even using a gig. You do have an option to get more storage space. You can also get OneDrive apps. As I said, a lot of this stuff is built into the new version of Windows, so you probably have it already. If you don't, you can install it directly from their website here. And there are all sorts of different apps. Um, Microsoft offers Office 365 in addition to OneDrive as a subscription service. So mm -hmm. you can uh, go with just the OneDrive, or you can add on the 365, or business as well. So there are all sorts of different uh, choices there. So that is OneDrive. The last one that we haven't mentioned is Dropbox. Yeah, I, I have for personal use. Well, also I've used it at work, actually. Um, Google Drive and, and Dropbox mm -hmm. are the two that I've used, and to interchangeably for different things or for some sometimes for the same project just because of what was doing what I was doing needed. Either one, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think it's it's actually pretty common just to pick multiple services and use them. So mm -hmm. Google Drive, Dropbox, Box. You know. Yeah. And sometimes if someone else who you've started collaborating with, they say, well, I use Dropbox. You're like, sure, why yeah. not? If I can have another one. There's no reason for everyone to have to change. And Yeah. yeah. And they generally all work in a pretty similar fashion, so yeah. it's not like you have to learn anything from scratch. you know. But this is Dropbox. You basically have all your files here, and then you have all these uh, various um, subsections over here. So you're sharing. You can see the people you've shared stuff with and your shared folders. I haven't really done too much with Dropbox. Um, I'm kind of reliant on my old favorites, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Now, that's the difference, too, with something that we actually have kind of similar but different services. Dropbox, it, and correct me if I'm wrong, doesn't have the features like um, OneDrive and, and Google Drive where you can create a new document from scratch. I think you're correct. It's yes. just storage of stuff you've created elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Um, you can work on it in there, because um, I know I've used it. I created something, and you did it in Word, I think, and then we upload it there to share, and then you sync it to a Dropbox file on your own computer, so when you make changes there, it automatically changes the main one up here, but it's unlike those other ones you're showing, this doesn't have the start a new document or right. start a new spreadsheet. You mm -hmm. have something else that you were doing that with first. Right. Um. Let me see. Is Box the same way as that? Or is, I can't remember now. Did Box have the create a new? Box actually does. Oh, okay. I can take you back yeah. there if you want. And actually, that's a good uh, point, what you mentioned about syncing your drive, because it does mm -hmm. mirror it. And yeah. um, if you add, inadvertently delete something on your local machine, it's going to yank it off the cloud storage as well. So you have so to you be careful know sometimes. what you're doing, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, for Box, if you click on there, New, okay, it does. Okay. yep, um, and it will take you. Oh, that right. That's one that worked with both Google and Microsoft. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And again, this is the Word Online, which is not um, my favorite iteration of Word, but it's okay. <laughs> and it's pretty slow today, so there we go. Since we're in Box, let me take you into documents folder. This is all the stuff that you'll see if you go to that link. Um, one thing that you might want to download if you do end up in this folder is the cloud services document I put together. This has links to all the major uh, service providers and some cool. pricing information and there's also a very helpful PC mag roundup of um, reviews for the various big names and cloud storage providers and mm -hmm. so on. And there are a few other links that might be helpful to you as well. Oh, we do have one question, okay. which um, I guess is going to depend. Uh, when paying for it, do you let them have your credit card number? Is that is there what are the I guess what are the options for paying? Credit card pay? would be one way, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. Some places also accept PayPal, so that gives you mm -hmm. a little bit more security. Yeah. Some places accept Bitcoin. Really? Yeah. Still? Oh, all right. Yep. So, I don't know if any libraries of that, but are using <laughs> Bitcoin much? But okay, so that's nice. Yeah, I know a lot of people are, and that will with the hack people getting hacked and stuff, getting that credit card information yeah. can be something to be concerned about. Yeah, it's always um, a consideration. But PayPal gives you that extra level of security. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 
Any other questions, type them in. What do you want to know? What do you want to see? Has anybody used any of these services themselves? I'd like to hear what other people are doing. I need to talk about some of what I've done. Mm -hmm. And we, we here at the Library Commission, I don't know, we, 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 we use it. We, we have local things as well, but um, we do use it to, to work with other people or to do some of our own things. It's, we're kind of a mishmash here, just like you're yeah. saying. There's so many different services that do different things, and you may have some local, like, on your own computers that you do stuff on, but you need to be have something available to you elsewhere. For me, it's so. always helpful to have stuff backed up in cloud storage because flash drives tend to disappear in my car. Oh. So if I'm going to, <laughs> to do a presentation, I know I've got it in Google Drive, and I can just download a new copy. <laughs> If, they, if my flash drive has walked away or yeah. got lost in the seats somewhere. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, Dan up in South Sioux City says he uses Google Drive and Dropbox. And someone else says same thing, um, but um, Box sounds intriguing and may have to try it. Yeah, that does look you know. I would give it a shot. Ones. It yeah. was my first love as far as cloud storage. And I've kind of stuck <laughs> with it. Oh, yeah, and here's one. Susie here says um, it depends on the project. For work, they use OneDrive, mm -hmm. but for personal stuff, she's using Dropbox and Google Docs. It's just, yeah, what works out, yeah. yeah. I use Google Docs a lot for personal things with my family, and, and um, just because they have, it's, it's pretty easy to get a Google account, and then you can share things very simply and yeah, easily absolutely. with people to work on things. I could see the benefit of OneDrive as a work thing because mm -hmm. Office is just so prevalent. It's everywhere. It is, so, yeah. You're yeah. probably already using it anyhow, so mm -hmm. it automatically is in there, yeah. All right. I guess that's it for your... Okay. Does anybody have any last-minute questions? Anything else you want to know about any of those services that had something on there that you wanted to see that we didn't show? Or the line, not we. Craig did the show. We did it together. <laughs> uh, we can look at anything if you have it. You want to get in before we wrap up here? This is your last chance. Uh, I don't see any questions coming in. Just lots of thanks. Okay. Thanks for the info. Thank you. Cool. All right. Go to this. All right, just ladies, because this doesn't tell me if someone's typing. You know, when you're doing instant messaging, so you can mm -hmm. see someone. It says, and I have to, I have to wait and see if something pops up. <laughs> so I'll give you a little time. It looks like we're all good. Everyone's saying thanks. So I think we'll wrap it up. You can keep that up. Okay. Um, for today, thank you very much, um, Craig, for telling us all about the cloud storage. Like thank I said, you. I've used some of the stuff, but um, there's always new things coming out there that you don't know about, and especially about the security. That's something that I probably am not do not pay attention enough for myself, too, although. Right? I don't think I'm putting anything. I haven't done anything out there that's really bad. The tax returns. You no, know, okay. no. Okay. That's all on my own, you know, local external drive. But um, in libraries, yeah, it's going to be something different to, to think about. What are you doing? What are you, um, how is that working out there? Yeah. All right. So um, I think that we will wrap it up for today. Um, I will, let's see. Well, actually, will help me. Can you just type in Encompass Live? Mm hmm. And we'll and enter, yeah. So, um, Encompass Live, luckily, so far in the world, is the only thing called that. So if you Google us or Bing or whatever, we, we're all that comes up. <laughs> um, so you can find our website here. Um, the show is recorded, it's being recorded, and this is where it will be on our website. You should go to Encompass Live. Right beneath our upcoming shows, we have a link to our archive sessions. And this is where we put all of our previous shows here. And let me see if I had last week... Uh, yeah, uh, the recording was on our YouTube channel. The presentation, in this case, we put it, I think, on our um, slide share, and then a link to this particular website. Um, what I'll do here for the presentation, I'll link to the um, box account box link that Craig gave us. That'll be there, and then a lot of links I gathered into our um, Delicious account. But he also had that document member in his that had even more stuff in there. So definitely go to that for more information. Um, Probably by this afternoon, the recording will be up. It, I'm yeah at the mercy of how fast YouTube yeah. likes to process things. <laughs> so, um, but usually they're pretty good. Um, but everyone who's here and everyone who's registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know when it is ready and available for you to watch. If you need to rewatch it, just get a hold of the information, um, or uh, um, 
share it out with anyone who wasn't able to attend today that you know might be interested, do that. You can definitely do that. Um, we do have a question here about continuing education credits. Um, if you are, um, we do do CE continuing education here at the Library Commission. Um, if you are a Nebraska librarian um, or a library staff person, we keep track of who's attended and I pass it on to our people so they'll, they'll do that for you. Um, if you watch a recording, you can use a form to submit and say, hey, I watched your recording afterwards. Uh, if you are from out of Nebraska, we do not obviously provide credits to you, but you will receive an email after this show is over that is your um, confirmation that you actually attended. It's only sent out to people who attended the live show. Um, so, and it will actually say that in there that this, sort of, this, this confirms that you attended the live show of whatever and for whatever time. So you'll have that that you can then use to submit to your own state's um, continuing education people to get your credit for that. <coughs> um, so look for that after, after we're done today. Um, so that will wrap it up for today. I'll be joining us next week when our topic is an, um, something related to some, what's something going on in 2017, actually, next year, is, and I'm going to hopefully get this right, Nebraska's sesquicentennial. Yeah, <laughs> 150 years. <laughs> and in um, related to that, um, of course, us in libraries, there is the Nebraska 150 books, which is um, 150 titles that were selected um, by our um, Lincoln City Libraries here, the people at the Heritage Room there of Nebraska authors, and the, um, the people actually on the Nebraska 150 Books Selection Committee were involved, and they picked some books, um, Nebraska-based ones that you can read that are related to our history, and we're going to have people from those two groups come on to talk about that. Um, initiative coming up and also about the celebration that's coming up around 150 is actually in 2017 but as you know these things are big so we're starting now talking about it so definitely sign up and join us for that next week and any of our other shows that you see here on the list um, that we've got here I've got all through the middle of September working on stuff later in September too always adding to it so um, keep checking back to see what's um, coming up also we are on an, uh, Facebook Encompass Live is our connection's slow, but there we are. Um, this new thing that comes up, I hate yeah, it's that, very annoying. and you can't get rid of it. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but anyway, Encompass Live is a Facebook page, so if you are big on Facebook, do um, like us over there. You'll get notifications. Here's a reminder of, that was last week's show. Nope, that was uh, not updated correctly. Okay, go away. Um, when our recordings are available, reminders of when the, what the next show is, um, all that comes up on here. So um, definitely if you are big on Facebook, give us a like over there and it will help you keep up with what um, we are doing. Uh, let's see if we have anything else coming in here. No, it looks like we're good. All right. So that wraps up for today. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Thank you, Craig. Thank this you. is great. Perfect timing. We're just at 11 o'clock. <laughs> um, so definitely sign up for some of our upcoming shows and let me know if you have any ideas or thoughts for any other ones, any topics you'd like us to cover. We can always look around for someone to talk on it. Or if you have something cool you want to share um, in Nebraska, outside of Nebraska, whatever. As I said, we have speakers that are both local and we bring in people from all over the country actually to speak, not bring in as in make you come to Lincoln, Nebraska. Um, <laughs> you don't need to do that. Um, although it is a wonderful place to visit, um, remotely you can connect to us and do a presentation for us if you want to. So um, I'll stop babbling now. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time on Encompass Live. Bye. <laughs>